Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm looking at resolving vectors on force diagrams. I highly recommend that you watch my other video on vectors first because that's covering the core math side of vectors and the basics of vectors. So that's things like finding the magnitude and direction of a vector. Today we're going to be using that knowledge and applying it to start looking at some mechanics. So do grab a pen and paper and have a go at all the questions yourself, pause in the video and rewinding as you need. Let me know if this is helpful in the comments below or drop me an email starfishmaths at gmail.com. Do feel free to get in touch about private tuition or small group workshops. I really hope you find something in this video that's helpful today and I hope you enjoy it. If you're ready, let's get started. So we'll begin today with considering a single force. Now a force is a vector and it's represented here with a blue arrow. And if you watch my previous video covering the basics of vectors, um, then you'll know that a vector has a direction and a magnitude. So, so we can draw a force using an arrow. I said it had a magnitude and a direction, so let's mark that on. Let's say that this force is, um, has a magnitude of 10 and the units for forces is newtons. So 10 newtons, that's the size of that force. And we'll say the direction, let's um, do the direction as an angle from the horizontal here. Let's say that that's 50 degrees. Now hopefully you know that a vector can be written um, in component form, so that's using either a column vector or i's and j's. And that's a very useful thing to do when you're working with vectors. Um, and what we're going to do today is resolve vectors, and what that means is, if you're given its magnitude and direction, find out what the components are. So break this into the vertical and the horizontal components. So we're just going to use basic trigonometry for this, and we'll practice a couple of these to start with. Uh, before we look at anything more complicated. So um, first of all I'm just going to turn this into a right angle triangle. The blue arrow force needs to be the resultant of the components. What I mean by that is when you turn this into a right angle triangle with horizontal and vertical um, it, they need to be moving in the direction so that if you start here and finish there you've got two possible routes. You've either got the pink route or the blue route. So it's important you get the arrows in the correct direction, if that makes sense. So you wouldn't have this one pointing the other way. It has to be going from the start to the end. So that's a right angle triangle. And we're just wanting to use basic trigonometry to find the sides. So we've got a right angle triangle where the hypotenuse is 10 and the angle is 50. So um, if you want to go back to basics and label that up, um, H, O and A, and we're going to resolve this vector to find its horizontal and vertical components. Um, I tend to write a little R for resolve and an arrow for which way I'm doing, so let's do the horizontal bit first. So this says resolve in the horizontal direction, um, so we're just going to work out what that horizontal component is. Now if we want the A, then we're not interested in the O, so that's using cos. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you rearrange that little formula, I'm not going to go through the whole basics of trigonometry here because I'm assuming you know it by now, but you should get 10 times cos 50. And on the calculator, I get 6.43, so 6.43 newtons. Now resolving vertically. If we want this side, then we've got opposite and hypotenuse, so that's using sine. Uh, sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we rearrange that to get what we want, it's 10 times sine of 50. And on the calculator, I get 7.66 newtons. And it's worth practicing this skill until it becomes kind of second nature to you. You know, practice it until you get to the point that just by glancing at it, you know if it's cos or sine. Because when you do mechanics, you can save time if you can just do that really quickly. The other thing I need to say is um, when you're um, breaking it into components and looking at i's and j's, um, to the right is positive, to the left is negative. So this one's positive, I've just left it as positive, that one, sorry. Um, and the vertical one, this one, is going up, which again is positive, uh, but down would be negative, so just be aware of that as well. So let's practice another one of these now. Okay, here we've got another force. Um, it's 8 newtons, and it's acting at 20 degrees to the horizontal. 
Um, so again, we're going to practice resolving the vector to find the horizontal and the vertical components. So first thing I'm going to do is draw a right angle triangle so that from the start to the end it's an alternate route. So they're going that way. So straight away that tells me the horizontal component is negative because it's going to the left and the vertical component is positive. Let's resolve. So looking at the horizontal direction, it's going to be negative because it's going to the left and we're using the adjacent, so I know it's cos. Uh, it's going to be 8 times cos of 20 and I get 7.52. Looking at the vertical component now, it's positive and this time I'm going to use sine because it's looking at the opposite side of the triangle and I get 2.74. So that's the basics of how to resolve a single force um, and now what we're going to do is start to practice more complex questions when you've got more than one force. Okay so here we have our next question a little bit more complex and um, we've got a light particle so that just means um, don't worry about gravity uh, just a little light particle teeny tiny with three um, forces acting on it the three Newton force is acting vertically, the four Newton force is acting horizontally um, and then we've got this one, the five Newton, acting at 30 degrees to the vertical. So one thing I do need to say is that forces that are perpendicular to each other don't affect each other. So the three and the four Newtons don't affect each other at all. So that's why we can break up, we can resolve forces into two perpendicular directions um, and just consider them separately. We've got these forces acting on this particle um, and if we add them all together then we'll get the resultant of what the particle is experiencing. So what we need to do is resolve in the horizontal and the vertical directions um, and add all the different components in those directions up and that will give us the components of the resultant force. Hopefully this will become clear. <laughs> let's get started. So let's resolve um, horizontally first. The 3 Newton is vertical, so that doesn't even come into this one. So we just ignore that. The 4 Newton is acting in the negative direction. So we can put a negative 4. And now we just need the horizontal component of this 5 Newton force. Um, and if I put my little arrows in to make the right angle triangle, then they're going that way. Um, again, start to finish, so that's down and across. Um, so the horizontal component is positive now. So I'm going to put a plus. Um, and this side is opposite the 30, so it's sine. So it's 5 sine 30. So see what I've done is I've taken the horizontal component of this one and added it to this one. The three Newtons isn't involved here. And putting that in my calculator, I get minus 1.5 Newtons. Um, so that means there's a resultant force which has a 1.5 Newton component acting to the left in the negative horizontal direction. Let's look at the vertical component now. So resolving vertically. This time we do have 3 and it's positive, and we don't have the 4, that's not included, uh, but we're looking at the vertical component of this guy, um, so this side of the triangle is adjacent to the 30, so it's cos, 5 cos of 30, and it's going to be negative because it's going down, so minus 5 cos of 30, and my calculator turns, tells me that's negative 1.33 Newtons. So we found the horizontal and the vertical components of the resultant force. The question is asking for the magnitude and direction of that. So now we're just practicing the basic vector work that we've done before. Um, I find it helpful to draw a little diagram of that force. So it's going down and to the left. Okay, here I've drawn a little diagram. The black arrow is the resultant force and the green arrows are the components, so we're going down um, 1.33 and left 1.5 and I've marked on a, a right angle and um, an angle there, theta. Um, this, I've just said find the magnitude and the direction, I've not said um, which angle to find. 
So this angle here will just be the angle with the vertical. Sometimes you're asked for the angle with the horizontal, which would be that one. Um, but here I haven't specified, so I'm just going to find that angle there. So first of all, to find the magnitude of this vector, uh, right angle triangle, we're using Pythagoras to find the size of that one. So don't worry about negative signs here, because um, negative numbers squared give you positive numbers. So we're just going to square those two numbers and take the square root of it. And I get 2.0 newtons, that's the magnitude. And now to find the direction, to find that angle there, um, we've got opposite and adjacent, so that's going to be tan, inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. And I get 48.4 degrees. So that's that question done, and that's quite a popular kind of question. So it's worth practicing that one again, rewind and have another go, or find some similar questions to practice, but um, it's well worth being able to do that one. I hope that made sense. And we'll now look at a couple more questions. Okay, we've got a really nice question here. This is a past exam question, so that gives you an idea of the standard that we're working at. We've got a particle that's got two forces acting on it and there's 120 degrees between them. Um, this one is acting horizontally and it's got a magnitude of x newtons. This one is um, acting... This one has a magnitude of 20 newtons. And we're also given another piece of information that when you add them together, the resultant is 3x newtons. The magnitude is 3x. So we can probably use that to set up an equation and solve it to find x. We'll start the way that we normally do by resolving. So I'm going to resolve in the horizontal direction first. Um, we've got x acting in the positive horizontal direction. And we're also going to have a negative component going this way. I'll just mark in those components in pink. So we've got a negative horizontal that way. And in this right, little right angle triangle here, um, the angle there is going to be 180 take away 120. So that's 60 degrees. I've sort of run out of space there. <laughs> but that's 60 degrees. So to find that component, we'll be doing adjacent to 60. So it's cos. So 20 cos of 60, and that is negative, because it's going to the left. And... Um, that actually, if you put that in the calculator, that's just 10, so I'll simplify that. That's x minus 10. And resolving now in the vertical direction, that one won't have anything to do with it because it's perpendicular to the vertical. Um, so we've just got this component here, and that is positive because it's going up. It's opposite to the 60, so we're using sine, so that is 20 sine 60 and my calculator says that's 17.32 so we've got a um, resultant vector here we've worked out its components so we've got x minus 10 in the horizontal direction and 17.32 in the vertical direction I'm writing that as a column vector just so we can see it and we're finding the magnitude of that because the information here says um, it's telling us the magnitude of that resultant, so the magnitude of this is 3x. Now remember to find the magnitude of a vector we're using Pythagoras, so we can set up an equation of those two squared and added together gives us 3x. That looks nasty but it is very solvable. <laughs> Let's square both sides to get rid of that square root here. Um, and be careful when you square that, it, it squares the 3 and squares the x, so it's 9x squared. Expanding that out, um, and I get that this squared is about 300, just rounded. Now I can take everything over to the right hand side and make a quadratic equation. Now however you want to solve that quadratic, you could divide everything by 4 to simplify that. Um, I've run out of space, but I'm going to use the quadratic formula and putting that in my calculator I get two answers. 
So I get 5.9 or negative 8.4 um, and we know that x is acting in the positive direction so it's going to be this one here um, so we can lose that negative answer. So the answer is 5.9 newtons. Really well done if you got that. Um, let's finish with one more question. Okay, here we have a situation where a small object is being hung from points A and B with some string or wire or whatever it is. Um, and we're given that the tension in this one here is 15 newtons. Uh, tension always acts like away from the thing that's being hung. So we've got a force pulling this up of 15 newtons. Uh, this one we're not given and we're asked to find it, so I'm going to call that T, we're going to find T. And we've also got the weight of the thing itself, which is acting downwards. And I'm going to call that W. Okay, so the question is um, saying that this thing that's being hung is hanging in equilibrium, which means it's still, it's not going anywhere, there's no resultant force on it, everything is equal. Um, and we're asked to find T and W. We've got two unknowns, so we're going to need two equations um, by resolving vertically and horizontally. Um, when we're in equilibrium, that means the resultant is zero, as I said. So um, we can resolve horizontally and vertically and just make it equal to zero, which is nice and easy. So let's resolve horizontally first. Do you have a go at this? The W, the weight, is uh, vertical, so that's not going to affect this. But we'll have a positive component that way and a negative component that way. So I'm going to uh, draw my right angle triangles up this way. So we're using, sorry, that's really tiny. I hope you can see that. Because then we can use that 30 degrees in that right angle triangle there. So the horizontal component in the positive direction is opposite the 30. So that's going to be using sine. So we've got a positive 15 sine of 30. The horizontal component of this one will be t times sine of 60, and that's negative. So that's the resultant, and it's going to be zero because we're in equilibrium. So that sets up an equation for us, and we can solve it. So 15 sine of 30 I get is 7.5. And we can move the t sine 60 onto the other side. So that means that that equals 7.5. And then we can get t by dividing 7.5 by sine of 60. And that gives me 5 root 3. So that's already found one of the unknowns that's found t. And we can get w by resolving in the vertical direction. So let's have a go at that. We've got the components um, in the positive vertical direction of both of these, because they're going upwards. Um, and I'm going to be using cos, because that's adjacent to the angles. So we've got 15 cos of 30. And we've got t cos of 60. But t is 5 root 3, so we can put that in. And then we've got w, which is negative. So minus W, and that gives us zero because we're in equilibrium. Putting all that in the calculator, I get 10 root 3. And that's it. Well, I hope that was helpful and gave you a flavour for um, force diagrams, basic force diagrams and resolving vectors. Do keep practising those. And I will um, continue this little series and make a video on some more complex questions and um objects on inclined slopes and things like that. But have fun and thank you for watching!